Hi, well uh, this is an update on the MSF clock. It's taken me uh, months, months uh, to uh, sort it out. Let me just uh, program the chip from scratch. Um, then you'll see how quickly it all works. Right, for some reason the uh, pick, uh, pick kit 2 with an 887 makes that noise. It says uh, the RAM is exceeding size of the chip or whatever, but anyway, so I've just uh, programmed it using the PIC kit too. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the other videos, this is uh, Microcode Studio and PIC Basic Pro. Uh, I'm, I was using the PIC 16F877 but, uh, microcontroller, but this is now the um, 887. It's just got more, well apart from it's faster, it's got more RAM, that sort of stuff. Right, so you heard me reprogram the chip. See the little MSF receiver uh, there from eBay, seven or eight pound. Uh, hopefully, if I don't get any inter electrical interference, this is going to update. So I'll give this a minute. Uh, it seems to work really well. So it's not. Uh, it's going to take over a minute because when you program the microcontroller all the RAM and EEPROM memory is going to go to like 255, sort of empty uh, and I'm relying on sort of 59 locations to receive the bits from the MSF receiver I'm storing them into 59 registers uh, so it's got to count over a minute, clear all the registers, start putting the relevant data in uh, I'll show you how to program all the basics of getting the signal in so today is actually the 12th of January, so as you can see it's not fully updated. 12th of January 2013, you can see the time is not updated yet. This uh, second counter is actually the memory counter, but it works uh, well for the second counter as well. There you go, 1928, which is, it is the time now, and it's just saying January. Uh, I'm on day 6, which is Saturday. Um, these bits down the bottom just error checking. So it's come up, uh, no errors, so what I'll eventually do, uh, tie this code into like, one of the Dal Dallas um, real-time clock calendars. Uh, real-time clock calendar will keep the time running 24 hours a day. Uh, the crystals, 38 kilohertz crystal crystals aren't very accurate, only accurate to within 2 or 4 seconds a day, so within a month you've you've gained, uh, gained or lost a minute or so, so I'm going to use this MSF receiver, update the Dallas chip uh, once a week, once a month, something like that. So it all seems to work quite well. So this is a continuation from the previous video. Um, let me quickly show you the basics of the programming. So you remember from before, let me, uh, so I'm using Pick Basic Pro. You've got the, I've got the uh, 887 up there. Let me just focus you in. Right, so the basics you want, pulse in. Port B, pin 2. Uh, uh, the 1 is to signify a low going signal and then I'm storing the uh, count as a variable N. Uh, if n's greater than 1, so I don't want it to include any zeros because the, uh, the pulse is very quick at counting, so it'll count the pulse and then we'll give you a zero immediately after. So uh, anything above 1 then uh, divides n by 100 to give you the result of, from microseconds to milliseconds. So you see m equals n divided by 100 and if pausing for two milliseconds and you see this is where I'm dividing the signal if M is greater than 470 milliseconds then if M is less than 500 milli, 550 milliseconds then M equals 5 5 is the minute marker 500 milliseconds got a bit of tolerance for the radio and electrical interference uh, then you see if M is greater than 80 and less than 150 then it's a zero. Uh, that's actually, it would actually be a one on the incoming signal. As you can see that. Uh, 
uh, yeah, it's a one on the incoming signal. Uh, then the, the signal gets wider, so I've called it a two. If M is bigger than 180 milliseconds, then if M is less than 270 milliseconds, it's a two. And then as we scroll down the screen, we get a three. Greater than 270, less than 350 is a three. And here's some basic error checking. I'm not using at the moment the last sort of uh, is it eight eight um, bits of data from the MSF at the moment. Been on this for sort of two days solid, good 16, 17 hours, and yeah, cracked it sort of last night. And refined it this morning, and you see it's working working well. Um, that's it really. If uh, if the M equals five, that's a minute start. So you start taking this data and making your clock storing it in the EEPROM register uh, and that's about it that's uh, you see previous videos LCD out so I've got hours MSF minutes MSF the counter divided by two because it's, it's uh, counting twice so I've actually got 120 bits of data a minute uh, the decimal one also to one decimal place I've got the MSF day day of the week um, that's about this is just for my reference You've got the uh, MSF date, month, and year. Um, oh, you'd see decimal three over here with the M. Actually, you're not on screen. Yeah, this M is actually the counter coming in from the pulse in, so I've got it displaying an M to three decimal places. So if it's outside one, two, three, four, five, uh, gives me the value up here, uh, or even if it's one, two, three, four, five. Um, that's about it. Uh, like I say, basic intro. Hope you like it. Should give you some idea how to get the MSF clock going yourself using Microcode Studio and Pick Basic Pizik Pro. Um, I think that's better. I'm going to run out of time anyway. Can't zoom in any further, so just scroll down there once again. In case you didn't see it, you can always pause it. So you start with pulse in. That's what you want for MSF. Or well, the easiest way to do it. Probably easier ways, but that's it. Thank you very much.